Well, it seems like it was just yesterday when I uploaded my previous episode of SpaceX in the news. Oh god, it was. And I'm sorry to say that the reason I'm uploading episode 25 today is under such sad circumstances. But the explosion of the Crew Dragon capsule is important news, and that's why this is a special breaking news episode. Episode 25. Let's get started. So the best kind of bonding moment for me is when I watch a movie with my wife. It's perfect. We don't talk to each other at all. Now we were watching this movie at home and she was on her phone and she had to just go and ruin the moment by informing me that the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule just exploded. So then for the rest of the movie, I was on my phone, completely ignoring her, trying to figure out what exactly was going on because guys, this is a really big deal. And yes, my wife is going to kill me after she watches this episode. So the first article I pulled up last night was from Florida Today and the caption read, smoke seen for miles as SpaceX Crew Dragon suffers anomaly at Cape Canaveral. But the picture included that showed a lot of red smoke. Now, a lot of you guys know I'm a teacher and one of the classes I've taught before was Chem Lab. Say my name. So the first thing that came to my mind when I saw this red smoke was the nitrogen tetroxide that the Apollo era used to ascend from the moon. But I'll get more into the chemistry here in a moment. What I wanna show you next is actual raw footage taken of the explosion of the Crew Dragon capsule. Oh, no, fuck. No, fuck. As you can see and as you can hear, the Crew Dragon capsule wasn't the only bomb to go off. There were a few F-bombs too. So what happened exactly? Well, SpaceX was conducting a Super Draco engine test at the moment of this occurrence. The Super Dracos are the engines that were originally meant to land the Crew Dragon safely under retro-propulsive circumstances back before they decided just to use parachutes instead. Now it's been confirmed, Scott Manley is more of a man than me. Because after the movie was over last night, I went to bed. But Scott decided to push forward and investigate the matter, and he also made a video of it. I suggest you watch it. It's pretty cool. Good job, Scott. You're the man. Scott! But he analyzed the video frame by frame and tweeted that what he saw is an instantaneous event. Quote, it looks like a pressurized tank rupturing, a failure in the Draco thruster casing would be a lot smaller. So I'm leaning towards another COPV failure, end quote. COPV, just a fancy acronym for the tanks that hold the fuel and oxidizer. Now this speculation is warranted because all SpaceX has released since this incident is just a blanket kind of generic statement. Quote, earlier today, SpaceX conducted a series of engine tests on a Crew Dragon test vehicle on our test stand at Landing Zone 1 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The initial test completed successfully, but the final test resulted in an anomaly on the test stand. Ensuring that our systems meet rigorous safety standards and detecting anomalies like this prior to flight are the main reasons why we test. Our teams are investigating and working closely with our NASA partners. To wit, Jim Bridenstine, the administrator of NASA, tweeted, NASA has been notified about the results of the SpaceX static fire test and the anomaly that occurred during the final test. We will work closely to ensure we safely move forward with our commercial crew program. Now I did tweet Elon what this means for the future of the Crew Dragon missions, but as unusual as it is for Elon, he's been completely silent on the matter on Twitter. But until that time, let's just run with Scott Manley's theory that this has to do with the COPVs. Now the Crew Dragon Super Draco engines run what we call hypergolics, which is just a fancy word for two different chemicals that when put together react very violently and explode. Now the way it usually works with rockets is you either use a solid rocket booster like you would see on the space shuttle or even with your most of your STs model rocket engines, or you go with liquid fuel engines. Now in both those cases, you need to add some sort of ignition source in your rocket engine. Now things are a little bit more simple when you use hypergolics because you no longer need to add that spark to make the engine burn. But the trade-off is, is that these chemicals can be quite nasty. The oxidizer that the Super Draco engine uses is nitrogen tetroxide, which you know is just a little poisonous and corrosive. In fact, during the Apollo Soyuz mission, some of this NTO leaked into the Apollo capsule on its way back into Earth's atmosphere, poisoning the three US astronauts and even causing one of them to lose consciousness and upon landing, the crew was hospitalized for five days because of the chemical-induced pneumonia and edema, which means it jacked up their lungs pretty good from inhaling it. Now, if you like watching documentaries like I do, I couldn't recommend Moon Machines highly enough. You can look it up on YouTube. All you need to search is Moon Machines Apollo documentary, and you'll find it. They have like six of them, ranging from the Saturn V to spacesuits to the lunar rover. I've been watching them for years. I probably watch each one at least 40 or 50 times. And in the Lunar Lander episode, they actually talk about these hypergolics that they used and how dangerous and poisonous and corrosive they are. You have this big red cloud. You couldn't absorb more than in five parts per million. It would start to eat your lungs. Now the fuel the Super Draco engine uses is monomethyl hydrazine, which makes nitrogen tetroxide look like child's play. It comes with its own laundry list of hazards, and being that it's a carcinogen, one of those hazards is cancer. So yes, when everything works and you have these two chemicals together, you get a pretty light show. And when they don't work, you get a red cloud of death. 
But if any good news comes out of this is that no one was hurt. It is better that these failures happen in testing so that we can learn from them and make things better in the future. This test was conducted on the Crew Dragon capsule that came down from the International Space Station the other month. So it's unfortunate that we lost such a notable vehicle. But as far as the future is concerned, we can go down one of two paths, a good path, and a very bad path. The good path is, you know, SpaceX with NASA's help does their investigation and their analysis on what exactly happened. And it turns out maybe salt water got in there and corroded the COPVs a little bit, making them weaker and causing them to fail. That could be an easier fix and something that wouldn't exactly affect the next Crew Dragon capsule that's gonna go up because they were gonna start that one from scratch anyway. Well, I mean the one that's supposed to go up with astronauts on board this summer. The one that just exploded was supposed to go up on the next Crew Dragon mission, the in-flight abort test. Well, <laughs> that's not gonna happen now. So obviously they're gonna have to postpone that one a little bit to make a new Crew Dragon capsule for that test. So I'm sure even on the good path, things are gonna get delayed a little bit, but on the very bad path, like worst case scenario, things get delayed a lot because maybe the issue isn't so much on the surface as it is deep into the technical makeup of the capsule itself. Only time will tell, and I'm sure Elon Musk and SpaceX will give us those nitty gritty details in the near future. Until that time, let's just be thankful no one was hurt and that this happened during a test where now SpaceX can make the next Crew Dragon capsule even better. Again, I'll be following up on this subject as new information is released, so stay tuned for future episodes. Thank you guys for watching. Godspeed and happy Easter.